Welcome viewers to Sabbath School in Eden. Today we are on lesson number 12, Taken and Crucified. Remember last week we again were on lesson 11 and we were looking at the trial of Jesus. But now we are looking at how he was taken and crucified. Today with me is my friend and sister in Christ, uh, Sister Sipo. How are you, Sipo? Hi, Leon. I'm good. And yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Now, before we start our lesson, I'm just going to kindly ask you to pray for us. Let us close our eyes in prayer. Follow watch in heaven, thank you for bringing us here today to discuss your word about your crucifixion. Help us, Lord, to have a deep understanding of what you went through at Calvary and that we may have takeaways to live and to understand in our lives. All this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, tried and crucified. Before we actually get into what the actual lesson is about, what are your first thoughts when you hear these uh, words, tried and crucified? I just think of the testing and the anguish that Christ went through mm. in order to save a fallen race. Yes, yes. That are the... Those are the first, first thoughts that come to mind. Okay, thank you. I think oftentimes when we hear the phrase uh, crucify, we only always associate it with the cross and the suffering of Jesus Christ because crucifixion is not a method that is used today in punishment or anything like that. So the only reference that most people will have is the time of the Romans and the death and suffering of Jesus. Thank you for that insightful view. Now, uh, our key text, I don't know if you would like to read it for us. It's in Mark chapter 15 and verse 34. Mark 15 verse 34. Mark 15 verse 34 says, mm -hmm. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabbat Chadni, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yes, uh, it was like in Aramaic where Jesus Christ is crying out to God to say, why have you actually forsaken me when he was hanging on the cross? I mean, imagine the anguish that he was going through and the suffering that he was going through when he was hanging on the cross. And here in, in the lesson, we actually take a view to say, Chapter 15, which is the chapter we're looking at, is at the heart of the passion of uh, Christ, the passion narrative, if you can put it this way. And because this is covers where he is condemned and he's mocked by the soldiers and eventually he's actually crucified. So we are going to be looking at that as we go through the lesson. And one of the things that uh, we will find is that there are a few ironies or maybe more than a few ironies that we have here um, <clears throat> it has two levels of meaning um, the two levels are conflict on, on the contrast of each other when we're actually looking at these um, ironies you look at even the situation where Pilate is questioning Jesus saying are you the king of the Jews and by right Jesus is the king of the Jews and he even says it is as you say so and him is not really a just king, and yet he's questioning the king of kings. So you find that there's a, a bit of irony there. The creator himself being asked by a creature to say, are you the king of the Jews? So any initial thoughts on our introduction? Um, I just think this lesson is just a testament of God's love for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm and the suffering he went through mm -hmm. he was silent to all accusations against him yes and i think we'll find quite a few interesting ironies as we go through the lesson yeah true that true that so on sunday uh it says are you the king of the jews um this is the story that we we're talking about pontius pilate and we're going to find this uh in chapter 15 starting from verse number one stretching to verse number 15. Uh, would you like to read that for us uh, a few verses from there from verse one to 
15. Okay. Of Mark. Mark 15 verse 1 says, As soon as it was morning, having held a meeting with the elders, scribes, and the whole Sanhedrin, the chief priests tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate questioned him again, Aren't you going to answer? Look how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still did not answer, and so Pilate was amazed. At the festival, Pilate used to release for the people a prisoner whom they requested. There was one named Barabbas, who was in prison with rebels who had committed murder during the rebellion. The crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do for them, as was his custom. Pilate answered them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew it was because of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd so that he would release Barabbas to them instead. Pilate asked them again, Then what do you want me to do with the one you call the king of the Jews? Again they shouted, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What has he done wrong? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. Hmm. So, you know, when I look at this passage and what's going on and understanding the rest of the scripture of the narration of the life of Jesus. Now, here's a man who had uh, fed hungry people, who had healed people that were sick, who had been preaching in their synagogues, and uh, a man who even raised the dead. And what is the reward that they give that man? Crucify him. You begin to wonder to say, was it just mere men that was crawling out to crucify Jesus or they were some kind of like demonic possession? Why would you crucify the one person who never did anything wrong in his life? And of course, Pilate knew very well that Jesus was, um, you know, innocent. And it was because of envy and jealousy that the religious leaders wanted him uh, crucified. Any uh, thoughts on your side from on this? Yes. As I said earlier, when Jesus was facing this ordeal, this questioning by Pilate, mm. he was silent to the accusations, yes. which greatly amazed Pilate. For mm. Pilate knew in the circumstances that Jesus was innocent. Mm -hmm. Jesus had done no evil. Mm -hmm. In fact, the irony that I found mm -hmm. was that they were releasing a dangerous criminal mm -hmm. in place of an innocent soul. Yes. Yes. And it's interesting to note that Jesus was to suffer death mm -hmm. for blasphemy according to Jewish yes. law. Yes. And in terms of Roman law, he was to suffer death due to sedition, mm -hmm which was comparing himself with the emperor mm -hmm. by calling himself the king of the Jews. Yes. And it, it's very interesting that irony that you mentioned that Jesus is both the Messiah and the king of the Jews and his conviction for blasphemy, as you said, and the sedition was obviously a mistake. Yeah. So the title of him saying that I am the Messiah, the anointed one, was not wrong. He was and he is the Messiah. And being the king of the Jews, that's what they actually used to allow the Romans to crucify him. Because if they had just said that uh, he's saying he's the Messiah, as in the anointed one, the son of God, that wasn't a crime according to the Roman law. Mm -hmm. They would have said, okay, so what? But now he, he, they're saying now, but he's claiming to be the king of the Jews. So he's saying that he doesn't acknowledge the leadership of the emperor. Mm. He's saying he is the king. So that is the, the reason why, you know, eventually uh, they wanted him to be crucified by. So it was just a plot to get Jesus killed because of the jealousy that the religious leaders have. 
So in terms of life application, I find that um, you never know where, how far jealousy will take you because you never think that just being jealous will lead you to murder. Mm. That's why, you know, even in the book of James, when it says that if you break one law, you're guilty of all. Sin becomes progressive. It leads you from one stage to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have no other further thoughts, we can move on to Monday. Yes. Which says, Hail, King of the Jews. Now, in Mark chapter 15, verse 15 to 20, it says, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus. And when he had scourged him to be crucified, and the soldiers led him away into the hall called Peritorium, and they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple and pl plated a clown and plated a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, Hail King of the Jews. So this was just a mockery, you know, putting the purple um, clothing on him and then calling him the King of the Jews, like how they'll say Hail Caesar, and they'll actually use the same term to say Hail King of the Jews, but this was just a mockery. They were not acknowledging him as the true king of, of the Jews. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this um, part of the lesson? Hail, King of the Jews. So my key takeaways from this was that Jesus was beaten mm -hmm. in this instance. And severely so. Mm -hmm. This was done in preparation of execution in yes. terms of Roman law. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers who would beat up um, these prisoners or um, these defendants were anywhere from 200 to 600 men. Yes. And you can imagine mm -hmm. 200 mm -hmm. or 600 men yeah, yeah. beating Jesus with a whip a that had, yeah. yes, that mm -hmm. had blood, mm -hmm. bones, mm -hmm. and all sorts of other instruments yeah, to yeah. to really um, cause damage. Mm. But the interesting part is that Jesus did not respond. Mm. Instead, he was silent through it all. Mm. Mm. And this just bears testament, testimony to me of his unfailing love and his conviction to complete his mission. True, true. You know, I always think uh, to myself, like... Um, this may be a thought I'll share with the viewers, that when God was creating man, he knew what would happen in the future. He created man with the ability to choose between right and wrong, with the ability to choose to love him or not love him, with the ability to choose to follow him and not to follow him. And he knew that once man disobeyed him, God himself had to die. And it's not like you would die with a heart attack or a stroke, but he went through the suffering that you were describing. Like uh, you mentioned the whip that they used, which was like leather straps with a bit of bone or glass or other you know, sharp things that would beat you up. In fact, you said it right to say it was in preparation for the crucifixion. They will beat you up so badly within an inch of your life that you were about to die, but you wouldn't die. They just wanted you to experience the most uh, gruesome pain possible. And God, knowing that this is the way he would die, he still went through it anyways. And even the prayer that Jesus um, made to say, uh, if it is possible, may this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done. Most of us would never think of praying it in that way to say, let your will be done. Mm -hmm. If God's will is for you to die, you would say, no, no, no. Let it pass and it ends there. But Jesus it is because of the love that he had for us, as you rightly mentioned. And with that thought, um, viewers, I uh, will come back shortly after this short break. Thank you for watching and may you continue watching. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School community. We invite you to continue watching and exploring our study together. To access more of our enriching lessons and dive deeper into the teachings, simply download the Adult Sabbath School lessons at www.ssnet.org. Sharing this link can make a difference and potentially save a life. Join us in this journey of spiritual growth and discovery. Thank you for being part of our Sabbath School family.
Welcome back viewers. As we look at our lesson, now we're looking at the part that says the crucifixion. It's on Tuesday. Sister Sipo, would you like to read for us from Mark chapter 15 verse 21 going down? Mark 15 verse 21 says, They forced a man coming in from the country who was passing by to carry Jesus' cross. He was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with mirth, but he did not take it. Okay, thank you so much. So this now we are actually getting into uh, the crucifixion and then you read a part where man was just forced to carry the cross of Jesus. And the interesting thing is that uh, when it comes to the crucifixion, the Romans themselves would never allow their citizens to go through the crucifixion. It was actually reserved for non-Roman citizens. The only way you could have been crucified at being a Roman is if you are a Roman soldier who had deserted. That's when you would actually be punished because it was the most gruesome way of torturing their enemies and um, at the cross one of the ironies is that his garments were removed and became the property of the soldiers and who cast lots to see who would get them and interesting enough this is a prophecy that we find in the book of psalm one of the prophecies that are called the messianic prophecies that you know revealed jesus to be the messiah that were mentioned before he actually was born. They part my garments. This is Psalm chapter 22, verse 18. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. This is a prophecy that was fulfilled. It, it, theologians actually say there are over 300 prophecies that you find in the Old Testament that point to Jesus. And every single one of those prophecies, Jesus fulfilled. And this is just one of those uh, prophecies that point to Jesus being uh, the Messiah who was crucified. Any thoughts on the crucifixion? Yeah, one of the ironies I took from this was that Jesus being the king of the universe mm. and the monarch of the universe was being mocked and killed when he should have been receiving worship and homage. True. Also, when Jesus took his last breath on the cross, the veil was torn in two at his last breath, which meant the fulfillment of prophecy mm -hmm. and the doing away of the sacrificial system. Mm -hmm. Up until this point, Jesus was the master of activities. Mm -hmm in all his encounters that we come across in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But up until he was arrested, mm -hmm. that ceased to exist. Mm -hmm. And now he was being acted upon. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I found really interesting mm -hmm. while reading mm -hmm. this lesson. You mentioned something about uh, the veil being torn in two uh, at his last breath. And you mentioned how that actually marked the cessation of the ceremonies. Would you like to you know, elaborate a little bit more on that. So from 12 to 3 p.m., mm -hmm. there was darkness at Calvary. Mm -hmm. And the irony is that Jesus died mm -hmm. while saving others. Mm -hmm. He himself was crucified. Yes. And... Part of the possible cause of death of Jesus was exhaustion, asphyxia. Mm -hmm. And even in before the veil was, uh, was torn, mm -hmm. Jesus' crucifixion was excruciating. Yeah. His median nerve was crushed, mm -hmm. causing extreme pain in yeah. his arm. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine. But I think the tearing of the veil was just a fulfillment of what Jesus had said would happen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that prophecy would be fulfilled. Yeah, yeah. Because as you know, like in the Old Testament, Paul mentioned how 
the Old Testament were a shadow of things to come. And the obviously the actual substance of something is better than the shadow. So Christ was that actual substance of the things to come. And in the Old Testament, I know they used to sacrifice animals in order for them to be forgiven of their sins and sacrifice a lamb. And even John says, at the, you know, at the baptism to say, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He was the one that was supposed to be sacrificed. And here it marked the end of those sacrificial systems. So that's why we don't need to do it that anymore. We don't need to sacrifice animals. We simply can kneel down and confess to God for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you so much for that um, brilliant insight. Uh, now, as we move on to Wednesday, it says forsaken by God. I mean, forsaken by God. This sounds like a, a very strange thing to, to say, to say, you know, where have you ever heard God forsaking anyone? And yet, this is the topic that we're looking at. You have any initial remarks from hearing that uh, topic, forsaken by God? Yeah, right at the depths of Christ being on Calvary, on the cross, mm -hmm. when sin was weighing heavy on him, God forsook Jesus mm -hmm. in that hour. And what caused Jesus great anguish was that event. Mm -hmm. Not the pain of crucifixion, but mm -hmm. being feeling separated mm -hmm. from his father. Mm -hmm. But what I find interesting on Wednesday is that there was a comparison between the baptism and crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we see that in baptism, this marks the beginning of Christ's ministry. But on the cross, we see the goal of his ministry fulfilled. Mm -hmm. We see the tearing of the veil, which is the fulfillment of the sacrificial system, mm -hmm. and a number of other comparisons as well. Mm -hmm. No, thank you so much for that insight. Uh, let me read from the same chapter, chapter 15, that we're dwelling on. Uh, verse 33 going down, it says, And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, as you mentioned. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabbatani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, remember we mentioned that verse where um, John says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So the sin of the whole world upon one man. Jesus is dying for every single individual who was ever born and who will be born after this point, their sins. Imagine they're all on him and then God turns away from him. So the reason why we don't want sin in our lives is because it separates us from God. The lament is the feeling of being separate from his father. Imagine all the fellowship that he had enjoyed throughout eternity that we don't know how long because eternity is, you know, eternity forever. And he now feels a separation to, from God. And that's what sin does. It makes us separate from God. And no individual truly wants that. That's how we die. God is the one who has eternal life, life never ending. And once we separate ourselves from God, then we die. But God wants us to have eternal life. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have any other remarks on there or should we move on to the next? I think let's move on to Thursday. Okay. On Thursday, oh, wait a minute, did I lose? Okay. I missed it gone to Monday because I was seeing you know, King of the Jews. But Thursday's topic says laid to rest. And that's in still chapter 15. Would you like to read for us from verse 42 to 47? Chapter 15. Mark 15 verse 42 says, When it was already evening, because it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the Sanhedrin, who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, came and boldly went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. 
Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had already died. When he found out from the centurion, he gave the corpse to Joseph. After he brought some linen cloth, Joseph took him down and wrapped him in the linen. Then he laid him in a tomb, cut out of the rock, and rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Madeline and Mary, the mother of Jesus, were watching where he was laid. Hmm. Interesting part here um, in our lesson. It says, in this passage, Joseph of Arimathea appears for the first and last time in the Gospel of Mark. He was a respected member of the Sanhedrin, one of the urban elites. As a wealthy and respected man, he had standing with the governor, which explains how he could dare approach Pilate and ask for the body of Jesus. So this Joseph of Arimathea was not just a regular man. He was quite a very important man. It is a touching detail that a member of the council that took such interest in Jesus' burial, meanwhile, where were Jesus' trusted disciples in all this? So you would actually think that uh, the people who would have prepared uh, the place for Jesus to be laid to rest would have been those that he walked with for three years. But yet we have this character, Joseph of Arimathea, mm. appearing to the show, who was one of the twelve. Yeah. Any? Yes. So what I took from this was that the cross, the, the journey to the cross for Christ mm -hmm. was a lonely journey. Mm -hmm. Um, from his arrest, his disciples had scattered. Mm -hmm. And in fact, only one disciple came to see where Jesus was when he was being tried and questioned. Mm -hmm. And that was Peter. And even then, he denied being a disciple of Christ thrice. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this was might have been quite an excruciating experience for Jesus, mm -hmm. um, knowing that his support system or his disciples yeah, were nowhere yeah. to be found. Mm. True, true, true. This indeed has been quite a very uh, moving lesson. And in other parts, it was quite graphic, you know, describing like how Jesus was crucified. And because sometimes you don't truly understand the experience that Jesus had to go through for the love that he had for, for mankind. And, you know, as human beings, I, I can turn to our viewers and say we do not like suffering and we do not like pain because it's not a pleasant experience and we always try to avoid pain and suffering as much as we can but christ being god being the son of god he endured the cross as the book of hebrews say because of the joy that was set before him that the joy was seeing you me everyone who would accept christ being saved and Sad to say that not everyone will be saved. There are some people who will be lost because they choose to be lost. And it's not to say that um, God is the one who say, okay, you are destined to die and you, you are destined to go to hell. No, we make a choice because it is not because you have sinned that you will eventually be destroyed. It's because you re refused salvation. Now, any closing remarks or uh, reflections on the lesson? I think as well, what I took from this lesson was the case of Pilate. Um, Pilate had every chance to let Jesus go. Mm. He knew that Jesus was innocent and that he was only delivered to him um, out of envy. And yeah, he could have yeah. called that out and said that the mm -hmm. only reason why this man is brought yeah. here is out of envy. Mm -hmm. But he chose not to. And the writers of the lesson say that Pilate actually longed to deliver yeah. um, Jesus and mm -hmm. or set him free. But he wouldn't do it at the expense of his position yeah. and power because mm -hmm. he knew that there would be a bit of an uproar if he did so. So, yeah, I think the whole experience of crucifixion is just something that every Christian needs to contemplate on yeah. and reflect on the journey that Christ went through um, on the cross in 
for our salvation is a touching story and it really was a lonely journey for him Mm -hmm. an excruciating journey for him he suffered great pain but he would have done it anyway yeah if there were just a few he would have still come on earth and died for us and that's Mm -hmm. the great love that jesus has um for us amen so it just shows the love that God has uh, for us. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that he should die. And whoever believes will be saved indeed. Thank you, Sister Sipo, for joining us today. And viewers, may God be with you and bless you. Amen. Amen.